Hi guys, welcome to the chaos. This is a recap of my first Norwalk Havoc event. I wanted to go over my fights, what my strategies were, uh, what I did wrong, and what I plan to do next time. Uh, before this event, I got both my Hound robots up and running. Hound B was better than two, uh, while Hound A had a bit more friction in the weapon. Uh, my first fight was against Attitude Adjuster, a uh, hammer saw from Scotland. I put in Hound B, uh, which along with its smoother counter road hitter, had a new and better balanced blade. I was worried about fighting a hammer saw as my last fight with a hammer saw drop saw in Alabama taproom tap out uh, ended pretty poorly. That fight lost me a drive motor, a weapon motor, and my battery. I made sure Hound was equipped with a titanium battery cover and uh, HDPE angry eyes to protect my weapon shaft from being unscrewed, uh, which is what happened last time. Fight, robots, fight. All right, attitude adjuster. Look at the size of this thing. Wow, it's an articulated uh, saw, kind of like saw loser, incredible. Or Scorpios, or <laughs> saw blades, amazing. Yeah, interesting build design. Um, it's got that vertical and that articulating arm that it wants to pin its opponent and then time out those hits. Versus Hound, which is just, it looks like uh, kind of dual verts. Ooh, good, fast, uh, fast self right there from Attitude Adjuster. Found itself on its head momentarily. Really what Attitude Adjuster wants to do here is push its opponent into the corner fire up that weapon and come down across the top. Oh no, and it oh, looks no. like perhaps Attitude Adjuster's wedge is stuck under the rail. Here comes Brett, nope, didn't need a save. Gonna keep that save in the back pocket for a little bit later. That's one. Here we parts. go, oh. spinning up that weapon. Attitude Adjuster showing that its hammer is very active. Some aggressive tapping there. Here we go, getting Hound on its head, there we go. If you notice, I spend much of the first part of this match bouncing around the box, uh, more or less uncontrollably. I found out that this was because my weapon speed was a little bit too high, and upon contact, uh, Hound flipped forward on its weapon, launching it into the air. I fixed this by decreasing my weapon power to 15% and focusing more on control rather than outright damage. Look at the zippiness oh, here. Oh, oh, I see a belt. Is that from the weapon on Attitude Adjuster? Or was that pulled out of Hound? No, Hound's weapon is still working. Yeah, I think that came off of Attitude Adjuster. It looks like the uh, the arm is still working. Perhaps the weapon on the end of the arm is not. Wow, oh, ripping off one of those forks from the front of Attitude Adjuster. 70 seconds left in this match. Oh, oh man, we almost caught a fork to the face. <laughs> Wow. These are two builders who got on airplanes to get here today. Hound driven by Noah Agnew from Greenville, Texas. An attitude adjuster flying here all the way from Scotland. You gotta love that. 45 seconds left here in this fight. I'm seeing parts of attitude adjuster being sprayed around inside of this box. They're coming off. And this has been just absolutely destructive match here from Hound. 30 seconds left in the match. Oh, it looks like there's a note written on the bottom of Hound. I couldn't quite make it out. Yeah, let's see if Attitude Adjuster can tip them over one more time so we can read that note, Chris. Sorry. Sorry, I'm something. Uh, the sticker on the bottom says, sorry about the floor. Uh, Hound uh, tends to kick itself up into the air because my self-writer relies on my weapon hitting the floor and uh, getting me up back on my wheels. Here we go, 10 seconds left. They've escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges, technically. I don't know, but this is gonna be much of a surprise here. I think this is very clearly a win for Hound. Ooh, and just one last uh, message to send to the judge. Hound removes one of Attitude Adjuster's wheels. And that's All your match. Right. Round of applause for these two builders. They traveled a very long distance to get here. I was really happy with this result. Hound was starting to do what I really designed it to do, control the match while dishing out respectable hits to the enemy. My second fight was Hound versus Tothic. I decided to keep this uh, low speed and controlling strategy going into this ne next match, uh, since this was a similar bot. I also put in Hound B again. Uh, 
The bot I was against was part of Team WPI, which is known for making pretty reliable robots. Uh, at this point, I decided to also add my one pound mini bot potato, as I had some friends available to drive. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Now, Topic is uh, what we call a hammer saw robot. They can come over the top with, a, uh, with an arm that has a disc mounted on it. And in doing that, they have the ability to spin up their disc and keep it out of the way until the time is right. Basically, they, they function as a wedge robot up until that, uh, uh, up until they choose for that hammer saw to come oh, into play. Oh, okay. Gives them a lot more options on how to approach a match like this. So, if they get them pinned in the corner, right, that's when they unleash the hammer saw and just start hammering away? Usually that's that's when they would choose Okay. So it's these three claws, I like to call them, in front that do the most of the work until... Until Ooh. now. Until now. Now would be exactly the moment that uh -oh. most robot would robotiers would choose. It. However, there is a... If the strategy goes deeper, they could be choosing to not use that weapon until they have it pinned in such a way that their opponent's weapon has gone down. Um, then they can hit with basically invulnerability, right? There's nothing dangerous happening on the other side. Um, frankly, though, I think Tothic may be having weapon trouble. And that's why they didn't use their spinner. Yeah, it's, it's just so tempting to use yeah. the spinner every time you've got a pin like that. You kind of want to have a very good reason not to... Uh, to take those opportunities, especially early in a match when you can do damage that changes the course of the yeah. entire Poor potato. Two robots in the last. That's a good point. We've got a multi-bot in the arena right now. Um, I can't tell. It doesn't look like the, oh, the mini-bot getting uh, hit by its brother or uh, <laughs> older sibling. Sibling rivalry at its finest. All right, let's see. Yeah, I want a little more attention, Daddy. Please, please. <laughs> To those final moments of the match, those last 45 seconds, I wonder if we will see that weapon. Well, now the other thing we should point out here is that the weapon, even in its hammer form, is technically a functional weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the blade is not spinning, just having that come down Pound and whack down your on opponent, it. Yeah. that that does count uh, with the, in the many judges' minds and making a decision of, of how things are going to play out if it goes to the judges, uh, which coming down under 20 seconds now, it probably will. Uh, both of these robots, very tough built machines. And yeah, here we go, last 10 oh. seconds. This is gonna go to the judges. We'll see if someone can make a, an impression in the last few moments, but uh, there's your match. Oh, and look at the last oh, moment. We saw it, so we know it worked. Topic's driver stated that uh, his reason for not using his weapon was because every time I was pinned, uh, I had my weapon pointed at him, spinning full speed, so it was a difficult decision to have him use his weapon against me, especially when he was in the winner's bracket, and had a chance to fight it through into the loser's bracket. My next fight was against Mini Panini, a large horizontal spinner and a mini-bot, which was driven by an awesome father-daughter duo. Uh, I equipped Hound A this time with a wedge, and uh, I removed its counter-rotator. I developed the wedge after Hound was ripped in half by T3. Um, and then the reason I removed the counter rotator was because I had it heavily damaged uh, after fighting in that same fight against T3. So I figured it was safer to leave it out for this fight. Three, than, uh, two, bots without faces. One. That's fight. true. Fight. Robots fight. Mini Panini there uh, has a face, but looks like it doesn't have spin, Kyle. Yeah, no, no spin, spin. Mini Panini needs spin, Kyle. Yeah, they desperately need the spin. Lots of movement here from Hound. Hound doing an excellent job. Getting in there, jamming up that weapon, not letting anything get going, and they've just pinned them up against the wall right off the bat. Nice work. All right, I've got a question. If you're Mini Panini and you're running uh, a multi box, do you call the multi bot Mini Panini? Uh, maybe, yeah. Is it Mini Panini? Uh, they can't hear me. They're dialed in. Yeah, they're too busy trying to not lose this match. The eyes have been ripped off of Mini Panini. The weapon hasn't run since the very beginning of this match. Heartbreaking here. Hound's coming in and just very casually dispatching Mini Panini. 
really doing a phenomenal job while doing so, yes. Looks like the power is out in Mini Panini. Uh, you can do, tell I did my best not to let Mini Panini spin up as uh, Hound had gotten damaged by horizontal spinners in the past on more than one occasion. Uh, unfortunately, they were having gearbox issues and uh, their drive gearbox and their weapon uh, gave out pretty quick, so that prompted them to tap out early. The next fight had the largest layover between matches, giving me plenty of time to worry about fighting Project Liftoff, a former Golden Dumpster winner who had just recently beaten Ablation, a robot with a very similar build style to Hound. Um, I initially had planned on using a broom on Hound A to slow down uh, Project Liftoff, allowing me to push them into a corner uh, while avoiding damage to myself. Uh, I quickly abandoned that idea after seeing how much traction they had with their new wheel spikes and uh, wider stance. Instead of that, I went for a standard wedge, which I had already ran, and I reinforced my weapon blade with uh, four steel standoffs. My strategy going in was to keep them from getting spun up and hopefully get them stuck against the wall, leading to a countout. They have Three, mastered that. Two, one, fight, robots, fight. Ooh, I mean, look at how fast oh! they're able to get up to speed. Hound living up to its name though, staying on top, pinning them into the corner. Uh, yeah, Hound, uh, even when Project Liftoff was just fully spun up there, not afraid to just go right in and introduce the weapon. Yeah. There we go, we got a nice pin. Allowed to hold those pins for 10 seconds. When you've got a weapon as powerful as Project Liftoff, you should take as much time as possible on those pins. I like the unicorn horn on the minibot there, by the way. Unicorns, of course, the... Uh... <laughs> At this point, I turned to my minibot driver and I said, uh, you're taking this hit, right? Deadly animals ever in existence. So that was the one unstick Project Liftoff gets in this match. They do not get any more. That is an unfortunate position for them to be in. They are a bot that doesn't have a self-riding mechanism. Their wheels are not very big. It is not hard for them to get stuck up on the sort of corners of the sides. Definitely oh. something to be cautious about. Another pin there from Hound. One of the things that Project Liftoff was working on also for this particular tournament is they have thinner, sharper wheels that they've been trying out. They say it gives them a lot more... I was quite annoyed at their very well-driven minibot, and I knew Potato could tank the hits better than Hound, so I took some time to uh, get the minibot stuck before rejoining the fight. Project Liftoff is probably going to want to give itself some distance from the side rail. Hard to do in this particular case. Hound is really using an interesting strategy on them. Get that weapon to stop spinning and pin them. Hold the pin. Take away Project Liftoff's main weapon, which is just these chaotic, massive hits. Project Liftoff getting where they want to be into the middle of the arena, and Hound says, no, go back up against the wall. Oh! Project Liftoff doing its signature pinball. Hound is doing such a phenomenal job controlling the pace of this fight so far. Yeah. Oh! Wow, we have 10 seconds left. This will not be a knockout no matter what happens. But can Project Liftoff impress the judges enough in these last three seconds? And there we go. That is the end. That is the end. Power down those weapons. Make your way to the door. This one goes to the judges. <laughs> this was by far the most adrenaline-inducing fight I had at this event. Uh, I didn't expect to have a working robot at the end of this fight, but uh, Hound had taken almost no visible damage, and Potato somehow still had its horn. I don't think Potato has ever gone a full match without losing its horn, and it's uh, only held on with hot glue and falls off as soon as Potato runs into a wall. So the fact that this horn was still attached was very surprising. Uh, I only found out at my Oklahoma event the following weekend that the uh, weapon mount had actually split in half, and that was caused me to have to do a full rebuild uh, in the middle of the event. 
At this point, Hound had gone far and out, and I had faced some of the robots I was most worried about fighting. I was feeling pretty good, so I put in Hound B again with its smooth weapon and flat front armor. I really wanted to try box rushing, as it's something I hadn't done often, and I really wanted to be able to do it for following horizontal spinners I was likely to fight. I wasn't too worried about Jack's weapon, and I thought Hound's weapon would spin faster and win any weapon-to-weapon -weapon interactions. Absolutely Three, crushing it. Best performance two, we've seen from them. One. Fight. Robots fight. Two extremely effective minibots, too. Both of them putting a lot of work in for their main bot competitors throughout this entire tournament today. Got just a pile of bots. Absolutely. So <laughs> there you see pile. the pin. And then the effective strategy that they have been employing all day. Alex Peza puts them up and sets them up, and then Drew Davis comes in for the kill. It has been happening all day long in two different weight classes amongst three different bot sets, and it's just flawless every single time. Nobody has had a good answer to it. They've really perfected the strategy, and I think a lot of times people ask, why why build a mini bot? You're going to have the disadvantage, or uh, a multi bot. You're going to have the disadvantage when it comes to, you know, the weight of the two bots going at each other. But this is how you do it. This, this is, is how exactly you take how you advantage it, yeah. of the opportunity that comes with having a multi bot. Yeah, and it, it is a thing where damage to the mini bot does affect the damage score for the entire match. That is the risk that you take. And right now, it does look like Alex Pez's mini bot is not functioning. Ah, there you go. So that is going to count against them. But Hound is missing an entire drive side, it looks like. They're not functioning at all. Oh, I see the plate on the minibot. Look at it. It's it's uh, it's out a little bit. <laughs> it's uh, no longer fully connected. Yeah, so that's part of why they are not able to move, it looks like, as effectively as they were before. And now Jack, uh, Jack Move has got to get itself right side up. They have fixed that problem. Jack there Move has go. use of all four wheels, it looks like, at this point. Giving them Ooh. a big advantage for the rest of this fight. The uh, angry huge eyes on Hound are uh, surprisingly intact. Yeah, well, you know, you got to use that angry huge eyes armor. Jack Move actually trying to help their minibot out. Like we said, that's an important part of their strategy to get them back up and functioning again. So while they have a few moments, uh, while their opponent is kind of immobile, they're just giving them a chance. But uh, they don't need them to win this fight at this point, especially since they're pretty much the only ones fully functional. <laughs> All right, I have a quick update on the Eruption match. Eruption is uh, deemed the official winner. So I, I think that means Spartan will be going home. Spartan is going home. Happy birthday, Johnny Sumpas. You've done a phenomenal job today. We're in the final eight seconds of this match. We will be going to the judges. Yeah, neither bot looking too happy at the end of it, but uh, they're both mobile? Uh, as you can tell, box rushing ended up being a very bad idea, as I immediately stripped one of my drive pulleys. I threw it out before taking a picture, but here is an artist's rendition of the problem. I didn't have a ton of time between these matches, with the help of my friends, I had just enough time to cover my entire robot with aluminum tape to keep my fraying TPU drivetrain from catching fire. Unfortunately, I taped over the bolt holes to the battery door, and I wasn't able to tell that I had forgotten the screws to my battery door. Three, yeah, they've two, really done a phenomenal one, job all day. Fight! Hard robots fight! Alright, creating chaos with the fire. Not letting you have a great line of visibility here. Just a reminder, the winner of this match goes on to face Shredded Bro in the next elimination round. I can feel the fire. Yeah, there's a bit of heat coming over here. <laughs> Hound trying to get some damage points in here, trying to figure out a way to get through that front guard on mixtape. Boom, they Whoa. got off to the side of mixtape.
mixtape there, causing them to careen around the box, but mixtape right back on top of where they're supposed tap to be. Out. That's a tap That's out. out. I tapped out early because my battery was exposed and I didn't really want to lose an entire robot, especially since I was planning on fighting it at another event the next weekend. Uh, the hardest part about fighting mixtape was actually seeing where your robot is. For half the fight, I had absolutely no idea where Hound was or what direction it was facing. Uh, if I was able to do the fight over again, I would have liked to have screws on my battery door and a good pair of sunglasses so I could actually see for the whole event, or the whole match. Hmm. Overall, I had a ton of fun at that Norwalk, and Hound did way better than I expected. And I met a lot of cool builders there, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, I would recommend going to Norwalk if you are live nearby, because it's just lots of fun, completely bigger than any other event I've ever been to. Uh, check out the rest of my channel for more teardown videos of this hound or build uh, overviews of my older version of hound. And uh, more videos will be coming soon for Potato and some of my other little one pound bots. Uh, so like and subscribe I guess for those and I'll see you guys next time.